Everyone's so now we're going to do another arcane deep dive. This time we're looking at parents and children here. <laughs> it's like, why that? And you look at it, there's actually quite a bit of parallels between, for example, like characters of Vander and Vi or Silco and Jinx. Some of that seems pretty obvious, but there, there's a lot of other parallels going in with a lot of other characters. In fact, if you actually look at the whole uh, situation between the various cases of mothers and the children and fathers and the children it's really really interesting how everything kind of lines up now i'm not sure if this is deliberate or not but it seems that there is a pattern here <laughs> so let's just kind of look at it so for the first off is i'm going to we're looking at mothers and their children and then we're going to look at fathers so here's a case of Jace and his mother. So, in this particular case, uh, it's not a situation that ends very well for the both of them. You, you know, some of you might think, well, why did Jace get upset? I mean, all his mother was trying to do was trying to protect him from the court, which is, of course, a reasonable thing to actually, you know, think about. But both of them have really legitimate things to deal with it. As far as the mother's point of view, yes, sure, magic did kind of help save her life. Um, but, she, you know, the priority is, of course, the child. So she gave the insanity defense as really the only thing that she could come up with uh, that would save Jace. Oh, but unfortunately, from Jace's point of view, is like, you just threw me under the bus here. It's like, even though it's a court and it's dark, if you look at the scene, if you remember the scene just before that, basically there's a whole bunch of people standing around watching. Okay, so he just got thrown under the bus by his mom. I mean, he, in front of a whole large group of people, very important people, he was considered insane. He, of course, was of course slightly triggered into mentioning about magic, and so he became practically person non grata in the kind of pilt over upper crust community so he he lost a lot and he feels that his mother is partly to brain and not only that the fact that his mom will support him is is kind of a betrayal on on her part so of course they kind of don't have a good relationship after that of course we don't see her again in, in the rest of the series but again, here's a case of a mom and her child just not having a good relationship. And then you look at, for example, like Caitlin and her mom. And this is basically, again, a case of either don't see eye to eye with each other. And Caitlin's mom is a patrician. She's a counselor. She is very concerned about appearances and basically maintaining the status quo or whatever that seems to be best for her house. And Caitlin is not quite as concerned about that. She's more concerned about justice. She's more concerned about doing the right thing as far as she is concerned. And so they don't see eye to eye. In fact, she, in this particular scene right here, indirectly insults her mom. <laughs> so of course, of course, her mom takes offense at that. And so again, here's a, here's a second case of moms and their, their children, in the case of her daughter, not getting along. So we got Jace and his mom not getting along in a, in a certain sense. Then we got Caitlin and, and her mom not getting along. And then if you want to see the, the big you know, fight here, it would, of course, be between Mel and Mel's mom. It's like, there's, there's like this is not just like a small <laughs> amount of difference between opinions here. It's like, this is like serious difference here. And of course... Mel's mom just basically threw her out of the house, threw her out the pilt over because Mel's mom felt that Mel would turn her weak because Mel herself was thinking more about the diplomatic way of, of solving things, the way of the fox as it's been kind of framed. Whereas Mel's mom is saying, no, 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 no. We have to be very aggressive. We have to use force in order to survive. And so while there may be cases where the fox uh, what method may work you really have to be the wolf is a kind of the idea of Mel's mom so you basically see in every single is instance that we see in arcane is 
mothers and their, their children not getting along. You don't see a single case anywhere in this particular series of a good relationship between the two. It just does not exist, which makes me wonder a little bit. But it's like it, it's not there. And so you kind of see that kind of conflict. Now, let's take a look at that and see how that's slightly different from the way fathers uh, react. And here you're going to see, for example, like a Vander and Vi. Now, of course, in the beginning here, uh, Vander and Vi have a slight, uh, basically, conflict as far as over what is the right thing to do. But Vander does his best to kind of teach uh, the lessons that he learned when he uh, was younger to Vi. Now, this is kind of incredibly difficult, and I've kind of mentioned this in a different video of the kind of immense difficulty that people of the older generation are trying to teach the younger generation who of course have never experienced making mistakes and sometimes making the mistakes themselves is the only way you can learn but vander is doing the best he can to uh, try uh, to basically teach by what is you know the best path how do we avoid uh, making mistakes now what this ends up doing is that Vi sort of initially uh, agrees uh, with Vander, and at least the relationship in that case it stays fairly good. In fact, you will actually find that the father-daughter relationship is actually fairly good for a vast majority of the characters. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is that the father ends up sacrificing himself uh, for the daughter. In the case of here, uh, basically given the chance between going after Silco or saving Vi, Vander chooses Vi and ends up dead. Basically, that was that was how it ended up. Now, now people will look at that and think that is the more heroic uh, choice. It may even be the correct choice, but if you look at the wider picture here, it's kind of interesting. Things get not quite as simple. It's like, sure, he could have gone after revenge, and he could have killed Silco. And in the grand scheme of things, would that have been better for the Undercity and for Pilto in the long term? If you consider what Silco ended up doing and how he moved things forward, you might say that actually sacrificing by four for going after Silco may have been the more correct thing to do in the long term. Which, again, it makes, makes things kind of a little iffier if you actually think about it. But from a strict, I guess you would say, short-term moral point of view, most people are going to say, he did the right thing. This was the right thing to do for the father, is to choose, you know, the daughter over what would seem to be simple revenge. Now, let's look at another example here. Right, here's an example of Silco and Jinx. So, Silco is again uh, basically forced into a situation whether he has to choose between Jinx or Zon, the nation of Zon in its independence. He has to he has to choose one or the other. That is kind of what. Uh, Jace pretty much gave him. And you look at this and you see it's exactly the same pattern between, as between Vi and Vander. And, and in fact, the whole arc uh, between Silco and Jinx is very similar as well. And Silco's doing the best he can to raise Jinx. And some people may think this is actually kind of an example of an unhealthy father daughter relationship, but you also have to understand that. <laughs> The basically the mental stability of Jinx is very different from Vi, so it, it's you're running a really tight tight line here as uh, Jinx having severe abandonment issues that even show up, you know, when Silco seems to favor Savika. So it's it's you know you know here's a guy that cares for her. He's got his own way of viewing the world, his own way of of 
basically parenting and you really kind of wonder what kind of parents he had but however you look at it you may say okay vander did the right thing in setting boundaries and stuff and silco was really just like you know accepting of everything and not setting boundaries which was could be bad i mean there's there's like different ways of looking at it but in any case in any case silco ends up in the same exact position as vander and pretty much uh, ends up dead he was trying to save um jinx from the shouting that and the confusion that basically vi was doing in this particular scene from his point of view he was doing what he could uh, to basically prevent uh, vi from taking jinx away and probably causing more unhappiness uh, for jinx and it ended up of course that he ended up getting shot and killed by jinx in an accident so vander dies uh because of vi and silco dies because of jinx now we look at that and there's actually another example of this now this one you probably wouldn't notice too much of but it, let's look at for example marcus now you say marcus he 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 just died right you know, like what did he do here it, it's kind of a similar thing actually when you think about that because here in the case of marcus as we know from another shot in this series is that he's a single father and when you think about that Silco, Silco's relationship with Jinx. Do you see a mother in there? No. Uh, Vander and Vi, do you see do you see a mother in there? No. You're basically looking at foster uh, fathers, basically guys who are taking up orphans who are doing the best they can without a mother involved, which is kind of an interesting uh, situation. And both Vander and Silco end up dead. Sorry. <laughs> and then you look at here, Marcus, whose wife passed away for some reason, and he's doing the best he can to take care of his daughter. And he's pretty much also, again, has to make a choice of whether to sacrifice himself for the good of Hiltover. And the fact is that he can't sacrifice himself because of basically what ends up happening is that his daughter will of course be alone there will be no guardian to take care of his daughter so he ends up dead because he can't make that choice and he tries to find a way to basically keep himself alive so he can protect his daughter but for the most part he's pretty much uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place and then when when there's a final confrontation uh, that ends up with him actually pulling out a gun on Caitlyn, but not being able to pull the trigger because either way, he's basically royally screwed. Uh, if he pulls the trigger, kills Caitlyn, then most likely what will happen is there is no way he can create a good excuse uh, to basically get out of being sent to Stillwater, no matter how you think it, because Caitlyn's a caraman and, and you know Caraman's mother wants to have his head. And if he lets Caitlyn keep going, then, then you know that Silco will basically get out for his head i mean he's screwed either way so it's just kind of a very unfortunate situation that here is another example of a father who ends up basically dead <laughs> now you might think okay okay so we basically have the vander sacrifices his life for vi you see silco he does the best he can uh for jinx and it ends up basically choosing jinx over the Undercity, and his actions end up, to a certain very tragic uh, way, ends up himself being shot by Jinx. Then you have Marcus in his not quite a good ability to get out of his own problem, and ends up basically dying, um, even though he's trying to protect his daughter. And then you, of course, have Benzo. <laughs> now you're, you're probably like, what? <laughs> exactly. So we don't know for certain that Echo doesn't have actual parents i mean we never see this in a particular series but you can almost look at it as benzo is actually a father uh to echo in in many scenes echo, echo just like really balls out when benzo gets murdered uh, by 
Silico's goons. In fact, you look at this, in the entire series, there is not a single father figure who makes it out alive except for Caitlyn's. <laughs> and Caitlyn's father is such a beta guy that we don't even pay attention to him anyway. <laughs> so it, it's kind of, you look at this and overall it seems to be a very tragic situation for the father figure and the mother figure in this series if you look at it. Mothers basically get estranged from their children. Jace has a fight with his mom. Caitlin has a fight with her mom. Mel and her mom just go at it, hammer and tongs. There's no reconciliation. Mel even forsakes the house of Moderna. And then the fathers, they all get killed one way or another, trying to do their best to protect their daughters. Which is all, you know, you look at this and it's like, Maybe this was intentional, maybe this was not intentional, it's hard to say, but it's like there are just so many parallels in this series, it just makes it so fascinating. And it's really like, what does this really say about parents and their children and their relationship? Well, there really isn't one clean way to say it, but otherwise it's, it's a tough road to hoe in a very, very dark world. So, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.